Time for the big three. Three stocks, three charts, three trades. Ben Lichtenstein will take us through the charts. Here to take us through the trades, Mike Shore, Director of Trading Education at Prosper Trading Academy. Thank you for being with us. All right, so it's a Thursday, Friday, you know. Tomorrow is a, it's a shortened trading week. Tomorrow, Good Friday. So today is the last day of the week. Mike, your thoughts on the markets. Where are we headed? What do you see, what do you see right now? Yeah, last day of the, of the week. Uh, and then the month and the quarter, too. No, don't forget that. That's yeah. our only saving grace why we're going to have any trade at all today. Uh, most people would have gone for the exits, but we do have a little bit of window dressing to do. Uh, so in, in general, uh, I mean, you know, we, we, we're, we're still we're still bullish. I don't think that things are, are wildly so. So we're still in kind of that buy the dip sort of mentality. Uh but it, it seems like we could be, uh, you know, cooling off a little bit here. I wouldn't be surprised if we pulled back a little bit. Okay, so that being said, you're going to bring on some trades, and I'm wondering if you're going to be looking for some pullbacks. Uh, Intuit is a name that you like. It They hit that high of 671 not long ago yeah. um, on earnings. And now we're, yeah. we're, it's at 651. Your thoughts? Yep. So, that, that, so exactly. So, you know, you put in those 52-week highs. Everybody takes their money off the table. We get a pullback to the 50-day moving average, and that's where I'm looking to get in here. It makes sense, uh, you know, cyclically with a company like Intuit, but uh, more of this is based on the technical. It's just buying its support. Okay. Um, let's have Ben take a look at the chart, please, Ben. I would add to that buying in a, into support and into a trend up, right? Because it's one thing if you're trending lower, but you're buying into support because then you're trading counter trend. But those that like to have the market do the work for them and that like to position themselves with that longer term move oftentimes find themselves positioned with the trend. So that's what we look for. And when we do that, we try and identify value. So let's do just that and begin with a very granular look at price activity. I've got a one minute candle chart here just to show you the two phases of development that help us determine value. Horizontal, sideways consolidation, right? Uh, Mike was just talking about how he expects to see the broader market transition into this phase relative to that high conviction vertical phase that we had been seeing where the market is seeking value in this instance, the upside. So again, just getting back to this one minute candle chart, shares of chart, shares of INTU sideways consolidating vertical to the upside and then finding balance here. There's actually three areas of consolidation if you have a trained eye that you can identify on this chart. Take a look. You've got the area around 644 that formed again uh, into the close yesterday. We're talking about the big move up we saw here today, sit through 650, uh, currently balancing around 64. For not what the bulls wanted to see in terms of this pullback, but could be a longer term buying opportunity. The way I see, it, as long as we hold above 650 here today, still exhibiting a bit of a bullish pattern. And again, on a one minute candle time frame, so you want to be careful about putting too much weight into this one, too much credence. But uh, take a look here. Let's step back, and you'll see a very similar pattern playing out. Now we've added quite a bit of time on here. I've got an hourly candle chart and we're going all the way back to we're talking into the fall of last year, uh, summer and fall of last year. Let's dial it up here. Areas of consolidation that are formed in this chart, you can see a significance associated with the $650 level. So it's not just again that uh, area we mentioned a minute ago, but uh, uh, keeping an eye on this recent pullback uh, on the longer term chart here, 650 is significant as well. Holding above 610, though, again, on the hourly time frame is what the bulls want to see here. But as long as we balance up here, it's still acceptance of this recent run-up. Mike mentioned the 50-day uh, moving average. He sees it as a buy opportunity. Here it is, right? We're testing it, holding it. Look at how long we've been above the 200-day moving average. We haven't been below that since May of last year. The other thing I'm noticing is RSI has some room to go to the upside here. So if we get some expansion, if we get a little bit of a bounce off of this uh, uh, shorter dated, closely watched moving average, this key level, ultimately we could retest that upper extreme. What was that? Around 670, 671. So lots to keep an eye on here. If we get further strength in the broader market, I would imagine into it, kind of along those lines, rising tide lifts all boats, right, Nicole? Yeah, I mean, when you look at the support level, as, as, as Mike was saying, you noted uh, the trend up. And, and Mike, I will say um, one of the last most recent calls was um, from BMO. They have an outperform at a $700 target. Um, just your final thought on where, what, do you have an upside target here? Yeah, uh, so the implied volatilities are suggesting 675. Uh, you know, that's going to mean that we're going to have to take out new 
52 week highs. So what I did is I put together a relatively wide uh, broken wing butterfly, which is essentially two vertical spreads with the front end of the vertical spread wider than the back end of this. So I'm looking at the 662 half, 675, 685. Uh, and you should be able to buy that for about $1.70. So if we go to our short strike, of course, we're going to have to make new 52-week highs here to do that. You're going to make over six, six to one on your money, which is great. If we only get to those six, you know, that 671 area, you still have a nice cushion to take some profit there. And if we just blow through this, we're still going to be profitable, even with giving back some of that money above 675. All right. Thank you for that. Next up, Boeing. From 176 yeah. up to 267, what a great run that was. And then now it's at 191. Um, you know, you have together, a lot right? of news that's happened. Uh, I mean, a yeah. lot that's been going on, changes in the C-suite that are occurring and all those headlines. Tell me about your thoughts on trading Boeing, Mike. Yeah, so, you know, so the way that I look at Boeing is that, you know, it, it, it's a major driver of, of you know, the world economy, much less our economy. And so, you know, we're, we're really looking for any sort of bottom here. Now, I don't think that this is one where we're going to go shooting up, but I think we're in a kind of a wait and see area. It looks like, I mean, those bottoms that we, we saw about uh, what was maybe a week, two ago, that um, those have soundly been rejected after the, the shuffling of the C-suite that you talked about. So I think that the market is saying, okay, you know, you, you guys have identified that there is a problem. You're doing something about it. Now, show us what you can do with that. So in the meantime, you know, I'm not talking about six months from now. I'm talking about two, three weeks from now. I think that we're just going to be in a consolidating pattern. So I'm going to sell an iron condor here. Mm, all right. So not feeling too great about Boeing. I mean, and, you know, that was the question that we kept asking every time it sold out. Is now the buying opportunity? Is now the buying opportunity? Ben, take a look at the technicals for us, please. Yeah, a lot of people have been asking that question, Nicole, that's for sure. I think what we've seen recently is the first real indication that we have possibly established a bit of a bottom. Now, I agree with Mike in terms of still some major heavy lifting to do for the bulls yet. But let's just start with the rally, start with the move up, and start with the acceptance of that recent uh, 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 rejection of the lower levels, I guess, is the best way of putting it, right? We oftentimes talk about how V bottoms are pretty unusual, but it looks like we've established one here, right around 173, a clear rejection of that lower level, have been and currently balancing throughout the end of last week and throughout this week for the most part, as you can see as we look at this 15-minute candle chart around 181. So again, on the left side of your screen, high conviction traded the upside in reaction to the news, and then you can see here just the uh, basically that we have been hanging out here sideways. There was also some news this week, again, Monday, uh, that sparked a bit of a bit up to that 197, 198 level, but follow through limited, but zero rejection as of yet. I think that's the uh, key thing to take note of here. Now, the reason I say we might be establishing a bit of a bottom here, and this is the first time in a while that Boeing is giving the bulls anything really to get excited about is when you take it a four, take a look at the four hour candle chart, you're going to see I'm gone all the way back to November of last year, lows 132, 130. Five, balancing around 143. You could see kind of paused around 175 on the way up into the end of last year before we went really sideways throughout most of last year. That spike up we saw uh, prior to uh, the beginning of this year up to 267. Failed to see any real follow through to the upside. Came back in and worked our way through the middle of this range. Not what the bulls wanted to see, right? They'd rather us test this 210 level and then kind of resume that uh, momentum to the upside. So again, losing that strength. We always talk about, right, when you work your way through the middle of a, a balance area, what does it do? Opens up a door for a retest of the lower extreme that was established prior. So that was, again, right around that 180 level. Look where we got down to. Now we're coming off that low. So possibly establishing a bit of a double bottom. The one thing I would think the Bulls want to keep an eye on next week and into the next quarter, next month, is can you get back above the 50-day moving average? That's right around 200. So well within reach here right now, especially with some of the momentum we've seen. Again, that high conviction move up that we looked at on the uh, more granular chart that we pulled up, that sideways consolidation, get that breakout to the upside right now, follow through ultimately, and that 
uh, basically puts that 200 level well within sight. Take that out, set your sights on the 212. That's the 200 longer dated moving average here in the orange line. Nicole, yeah, momentum off these lows here. Exactly what the bulls have been looking for for a while now. Yeah, yeah. I'll add today, City made a call on Boeing. They put a 252 price target. They maintained mm. the buy rating. Mm. Um, your final thoughts on this trade here, Mike? Yeah, I think Ben and I are talking about the exact same support and resistance levels. So I'm looking at, 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 at essentially not going below 180 and then playing off of that 50 day moving average, at, at, which is essentially at $200. And I'm selling the 200, 205 call spread. I think there's going to be a lot of people that that got in at that magic 200 number. And uh, I think that that's going to be the stopping point for everybody that bought it there. And they're happy to get out with just a scratch of a trade. So just consolidation over the next two or three weeks. Yeah, got it. Um, Snowflake ran up to a recent high of 237, had its earnings, uh, had a gap down and now is trading around 162. This was not that long ago it had that IPO. Even Buffett um, was interested. He never is interested in IPOs, but this one he liked. Um, tell me a little bit about Snowflake, where you think it's headed. Yeah, so, you know, it was going along just fine, and then, you know, earnings came out, and then, you know, at the same time, they are, they or shortly thereafter, their CEO stepped down, retired, whatever they want to call it. But now that we've seen... We've put in a nice little consolidation bottom and the new CEO not only was announced, they bought a bunch of stock along with it. So their money is where their mouth is. And uh, and, and so I'm looking to actually, I usually don't look for this type of trade down at the bottom of the of, of the distribution, but it is, it's is—it's definitely looking to the upside. So I'm gonna play this straight vertical call spread. All right. Um, he likes this one. He's saying that, you know, feeling a little bullish here. Tell me more about the technicals, Ben. Yeah, this one kind of has me scratching my head here, Nicole. I'm not really sure what to make of it. There's not really a well-defined trend one way or the other when you look at the longer term. So I think you have to kind of focus on a little bit more short term ultimately here. And with that, you're more susceptible to some of the head fakes, the ins and outs that don't necessarily – uh, tip the scales one way or the other on those longer term charts here, but seem like a significant move on the short term. Let's dive into, first and foremost, a one minute candle chart. Just wanted to look at, similar to uh, the approach towards looking at price activity we've had with the other two names here today, just kind of viewing it through the lens of most of the time price activity spends its uh, in this horizontal pattern, right, where you're kind of overlapping, sideways, very random, limited in terms of conviction. And then you get a catalyst and you break out to the upside. We saw that with Snowflake. It took off to 167. And then again, throughout most of the day, it's been kind of sideways to, well, snow's been sort of falling, I guess, as uh, I'm sure everyone knew I was going to say that, but uh, was wondering how long it would take me to get it out. But yeah, it's been coming off here. One minute candle chart. Let's not make too much of that, but take a step back. You're going to see it. It's been falling for a while now. You're going back to earnings. You see the huge catalyst to downside balance around 1.8, another breakdown, and then sideways consolidation. So we're currently holding below or right around that 160 level, below 180. Basically a bearish pattern playing out here as you take a step back. And again, we're looking at an hourly candle chart here. And we're going back to the highs that we saw up around 237 back in mid-February. Now, I did want to show you one more chart here. Take a look because this is what we like to look for, right? And last time we looked at snow, we talked about how selling off the double top that we saw up around this 240 area has us back to a key area around 215 where the bulls really needed to flex some muscle, right? And at the time we were testing, what was it? We were in this area here. Look, they broke down below it, which does not necessarily a short make, but it does show you that you're losing that momentum to the upside. Look what happened. We kind of consolidated here, actually established a bit of a triple top, but then the bottom falls out here. So again, just the fact that we took out that 215 level meant that we were kind of, again, losing momentum to the upside. That trend up was starting to come into question after a double top. We formed actually a triple top. All of this to the downside since has been, again, not not necessarily establishing a bit of a short position yet, but really making that long that we had seen that was rewarding the bulls for a while invalidated. So again, a bit of a head scratcher for me here. I'm taking a step back on this one, Nicole. Yeah, I like that chart, Ben. And, and thank you for that report. It was a good one. Um, and throwing a few extras in there. We appreciate it. Mike, your final thought on this trade. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I agree. It's a bottom feeder type of trade. Uh, but, you know, the, the big move came down that it was 
you know, somewhat on earnings, but mostly because they didn't know what the direction of the company from the management side was. And so, you know, with, with new management coming in, put, you know, investing in the company and then getting a, a short-term technical breakout, I think that it's definitely worth the reward to risk. All right. Thank you so much. Mike Shore and Ben Lichtenstein for the big three today. Great to see you both. Appreciate it.